Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and today we're going to look at hypothesis testing with a one sample Z test for the mean. The average greyhound can reach a top speed of 18.1 meters per second. A particular greyhound breeder claims her dogs are faster than the average greyhound. A sample of 40 of her dogs ran, on average, 18.4 meters per second with a population standard deviation of 1.2 meters per second. With alpha equal to 0 0.05, is her claim correct? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the problem and I'm going to pick out the information that I need. So the average speed of all greyhounds is 18.1 meters per second. So that's my population mean. Um, a particular greyhound breeder, she claims they're faster. We took a sample of 40 dogs, so N is 40. And they ran, on average, 18.4 meters per second, which gives us our sample mean of 18.4. And we had a population standard deviation of 1.2 meters per second. So now what we need to do is we need to set up our null and alternative hypothesis. Since this is a test for the mean, we're talking about the average speed, let's see what we're claiming. She claims that her dogs are faster. So I have HO and HA, and I've established that it's the mean, and so she claims her dogs are faster than the established value of the mean. We know that we have HO and HA are mathematical opposites, so if I have greater than here, I have to have less than or equal to here, and so that becomes 18.1. The other thing we know is, remember, there's never an equal sign in our alternative hypothesis, so that's how I knew to put the greater than 18.1 into HA. The other thing that this tells me is that I have a one-tailed right test. Remember the way I find the direction and the tails is going to HA to find my information. And it says greater than, so that's that arrow pointing to the right tail of the curve. And we have a one-tailed test. So here I have a setup on our normal curve. And we were running a one-tailed right test which means the rejection region is in this upper tail of the curve. And I had an alpha equal to 0 0.05, which means in this area between the mean and this critical value, it gave me 45%. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what this critical value is for a one-tailed right test of the mean using normal or Z distribution. We knew that we had 45% of the data between the mean and our critical value, so I'm going to search inside my normal distribution table until I find one, uh, the 45%, and I find it here, except that 4495 and 4505 are exactly the same distance from 45%. So when I go out to my 1.6, I'm going to take and I'm going to split the difference between the 0.04 and the 0.05, which is going to give me a critical value equal to 1.645. Remember that 1.645 is a standard value for alpha for a one-tailed test of the mean in the upper tail. So now I have a critical value that separates my rejection from my non-rejection region, and that was 1.645. So if our calculated test statistic is more extreme than our critical value, in other words, if it falls into this area of the curve, our decision will be to reject HO. If our calculated test statistic is less than our critical value, our decision will be do not reject HO. We're running a one-sample Z test, 
So our calculated test statistic is a z-score. So this is our standard z-score formula. So x bar, she claimed that her dogs ran on average 18.4. The population ran 18.1. We had a population standard deviation of 1.2, and we had a sample size, or n, of 40. And so when we do that math, we come up with a z-score, or a calculated test statistic, of 1.58. So it's decision time. So we knew that our calculated test statistic of our z was 1.58. And remember, we would have needed a calculated test statistic more extreme than this critical value to reject HO. And that 1.58 falls somewhere down here below the critical value. And since the Z is less than the critical value, our decision will be do not reject HO. So when we draw our conclusion, our decision will be do not reject HO. There is insufficient evidence at this time to conclude that the average speed that a Greyhound can run is greater than 18.1 meters per second. As always, I hope that you found this useful and thanks for watching.